So we're at Hong in Hong Kong. It's Joe and Geordie, yeah. and the back is of the boat. Um, going back to our roots a little bit. I'm um, going to have a look at installation on a boat in Hong Kong Harbour and uh, to see how it's been installed. So we can look at it's something we done when we first started, right at the very beginning. So um, it's going to be quite an interesting. So all good. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Any problems on installing it? Uh, we got to have a look now if everything is correctly done. Fantastic. So, the, welcome to Hong Kong. And it's, well, the weather looks awful. Let me turn the camera around because it, it looks like we're going to have rain. Oh, that's the new terminal. Yes, yes, yeah. The, uh, this is where our, our office is behind those uh, buildings there. Over there. They are yellow. Uh, the yellow. Yeah. So this is the, the boat. This Joe you probably recognize. <laughs> oh, okay, so they're re refurbishing it all. Climbing a ladder after a knee replacement. Well, obviously it's working. Wow. So I'm not going to go on the deck, but I can, I can see the panels. The whole deck is. So how many panels have you got? 30, 36. 38. 38. So 38, what's it producing? Yes. Yeah, 38. Over times 320. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's pretty amazing. So uh, no, it looks good. Uh, they'll be glued onto the deck, are they? Yeah, we have used the glue and um, not to make any holes in the deck. Yeah, because this always, can't. Yeah. always <laughs> gives you problems. Yeah. And yeah. so we glue it with uh, some good um, 3M uh, slow cure yeah. and, um, and all the, the railing to, um, to adjust it to the deck. Yeah. You're doing a nice job. This is different. It's, it's not a conventional installation like on a. On a on a house because you can't obviously use house fixings because as you say you can't drill it otherwise drilling a boat is not a good idea <laughs> exactly and then you have a little bit of a curve that you need to overcome yeah yeah, yeah i can see that i can see actually it, it looks like the panel's almost curved yeah the, the sort of vents as it's going down the boat but it's quite impressive and then we used the little screws in the middle to just uh, hold them mm. and we also use some little screws like this um, yeah in this direction so it's solid so it's basically they're um, underneath you can see them they're also yeah stick into each other so it, it so will never rock, blow it's off rock solid. Yeah. It's yeah. Rock solid yeah so uh yeah. it's nice very impressive good let's go have a look downstairs the uh yeah, down this ladder good. so there's a generator down below is it it's a standby it's power deck. Uh, it's behind this wall actually you can see it, yeah. oh, okay it's a small one, it just provides here for the workers. Yeah, yeah. It's a good sized barge though. It's huge. And who's the dog? This is the one from the owner of the barge. <laughs> the the guard dog. Buddy. 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 And then always, this, this stuff is always on. And... Kitchen, yeah, it's a huge boat. So we're going, it's the engine room. Yeah, we go to the engine one. It's all the way down. So how many batteries are we trying here? Twelve batteries. Yeah. And we have the cable coming up from down below. Oh. So we have the battery switches down. Okay, and then coming from basically from here, from the from the other side. Yeah. Coming in here. Coming up, going uh, to one of the to ch yeah. each one of the machines. Yeah, yeah. 
So we all on. So, so currently the solar's pretty low at the moment. Yeah. It's, a, it's a rainy day. It's a rainy day. It's only producing uh, 560 watts, but it will, it's early in the morning, so it's fairly early days at the moment. So uh, you can see what it produces. So it produces a fair bit of power each day. If there's any fault, yeah. anything, you can, are you filming it? Oh, okay, sorry. sorry. Okay. So, so there's two different things going on. If you use peak power shaving, peak power shaving is basically limiting the power from the generator to your setting, so it will never pull more than that power. So if your generator, if you've got a small generator, uh, maybe a, a 10 kVA generator, and you want to limit the power, because otherwise, if you pull too much power, the generator will slow down, doo -doo, and then the frequency is going to go out, and, the and then it will drop it out. So peak power shaving is a really nice feature, but it will constantly pull power. When you're using the other features of the unit, it's got three relays, and it will connect the, the grid, physically connect to the load. Correct. It doesn't use the peak power shaving feature. When it connects to the load, that generator is going to provide the full load, yeah. everything that you need, and... Um, the yeah, so if you're telling me in summer they're going to be using all the generators, and then how about all the other boats are going to use the same generators, not enough power? Yeah. So a simple way to get a simple way to get around this on a boat probably would be increased peak power shaving, but using a, some sort of a, a, just to put a switch or a timer switch, separate switch on the AC. So you can switch the AC off coming in. If you switch the AC off, it's going to be running on battery because of UPS yeah. until the battery cuts out. And then you can physically switch that on or you can you can have it you can have it put it on a timer, just a timer switch, a standard box standard timer switch. And you say, right, during the daytime I don't want the, the shore power, I only want the shore power operating at certain times. You can do that. You've got quite a you, you know, some of these timer switches have got summer winter settings. So you could you, you could have a summer winter setting on a time just a just a controller just a simple timer switch maybe with summer winter setting that's doable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but you've got two different things going on. This <coughs> will certainly work and it will certainly control if you've got if the generator is big enough the generator can power the whole boat and charge the batteries to a certain level then fine use the timers but if it can't charge the whole boat and it's limited because it's working other boats. And use the peak power shaving feature. The two completely different features. Um, well, the genset is big enough. Uh, the cable up here is quite big enough. We used even double cable, so as we have yeah, but it's not. But, but, you, but you're telling me it's, got, it's powering other boats. Yeah, so I cannot turn it off. But I can turn off the entrance up here. I can turn. I can put a relay yeah. in between. The you can on the AC cable. You can yeah, do that. You, exactly. can, you, you can put. You can put a. You can put a <coughs> switch. Do you know you've got internet on here? One of the things, this, this has actually got quite a nice feature. If you're using the Sunset Connect, if you go and get a Philips U-bulb, um, and you can put the bulb anywhere on the boat, uh, because you're on, you're on internet, uh, anywhere it's connecting, and then if the battery's full, it will like green. If the battery's low, it'll go orange. If the battery's very low, it'll go red. And so the owner can see the state of the batteries. Um, um, I suppose, based on that sort of scenario, it, it wouldn't be rocket science to make the switch go automatic. So if it goes very low, you can actually have a separate switch that would work automatically yeah. um, to switch it, switch it in, and that will be running on peak power shaving. Yeah. Um, it's something that, something we can look at. Um, I don't think it would be that difficult to do that because we do have switching, external switching now, and whether we work it in reverse for a, for a scenario where your power is running very low and you need to switch in, but most people would use a generator that power the whole system, um, or you physically switch it on, or if you're going to use the ATS on the generator, the automatic transfer switch, you, the generator must be big enough to power. So, for example, you've got uh, two inverters here, um, 16, 17 kVA, real 17 kVA, not like a Mickey Mouse or some of some inverters. You know, they call themselves 15, 15 uh, kilowatt, but actually only 10 kilowatt. That was a true, true, true value. So you've got a lot of power here. Um, if you're going to pull off the off the gen set, it's going to pull a fair bit of power. It's going to draw 80 amps plus your bypass. So it could be drawing maybe. 120, 140 amps at 240 volt off that gen set. It's a lot of power, so we need to we need to consider that. Um, but I think the simplest way for this would work really well. Increase your you peak power, increase your power shaving. So I take it up a bit. Yeah. So I definitely take the power. Sh I take the. Uh, I take the. I take the power shaving. I take the power shaving. Uh, power up. Peak power shaving. So I put it to a thousand just to see it. 
I would take that up to about, what's the maximum usage that when the battery is low, they would pull? When the whole boat is running, it's it's a lot. Like, uh, at night time. <clears throat> but at night time, you're going to drop a bit. So say four kilowatt. Yeah. So if we pick it up to four kilowatt, so you can drop this later for now, but I would say, would four kilowatt affect the use of the generator with other people? Well, I think the genset is enough because in the night there is only one little boat that is on another boat. Yeah, but you may have other water. So let's take it to four kVA. Yeah. You can take it more. So now it's running at four kVA peak power shaving. Uh, and you'll, you'll see in a second, it'll start whacking up yeah, the power. Right, there, yeah. okay, it's whacking up the power and it's dumping a lot of power into the batteries at the moment. And it's pulling at 4kV. I think the best way then is to put in some sort of external switch on the AC, because that way you've got full control then. Um, and a simple switch, you have a timer switch or you have a physical switch, because uh, don't forget, if you, put, if you put a Hue light bulb, you can have the light bulb so it sets at a certain level, and if it's there, you can see, it, you can do that automatically. Yeah. Because if so no, now basically, if we have no no load on the boat, all the power of the solar panel will go into the battery, Correct. including the grid power. Correct. Everything will go in. <clears throat> I see. So it's pumping a lot of power into the batteries now. Yeah. Yeah. Because the inverters are bidirectional inverters, so either see, see the thing is, when you when you're using um, the inverter, will only do one or two things. The inverter can charge, it can discharge. It can't do both at the same time because it's a bi-directional inverter, it goes one way or the other. Yeah. So when you're using off, when you're going off the generator, it's in charge mode. The inverter turns around and it starts to charge yeah. or discharge. When you're using peak power shaving, the inverter's floating in between the two positions. So basically, if you possess it to two kilowatt and your load is two and a half kilowatt, it will discharge. If it goes the other way around, it will charge. So the inverter's moving around, it's floating in between the discharge and discharge nice. all the time. It's really nice. It's quite special. Um, and it's got this floating position. Okay. So I think the easiest way, if you want, for what you want, it's actually working, the system's working really well. Basically, at the moment, the battery will be our backup system. Yeah, yeah. If, if we go above the settings that you just showed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so to, to actually to find the, the, the minimum of this level is the best what we can yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've always got reserve, correct. And, so you, and, and also working. the peak power shaving, you need to find the best point <clears throat> of the peak power shaving that will work best for the system. Yeah. That is if you're using a third inverter here and the inverter is just a charger and the charger then can control from the timer. So you can have a third inverter. Because these are both supplying the load, because what happens is, is the grid will physically connect to the load. If you use it just as a charger, there's no load on it and then you can limit it. So you have a third inverter that will work from the clock and that will also limit the load because there's no load on it. So when it clicks over, there's no physical load connected to it. It's the grid charger that that can work completely independently. And that will bring the batteries up to the level and that will control from the, from the, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't connect in the parallel system. It works as an independent unit, but it will parallel onto the batteries and it will bring the batteries up. Right. And that's quite a, that's, so you DC coupling it. So quite a few people do that. And they'll DC couple a third, a small inverter as a DC couple, just as a charger. And in that application, then you can use all the timers and everything. So there you go. It's quite interesting application. It's where we started off on boats and uh, it's still very much suitable for a boat. And we were talking about the two different ways to use the inverter, one in peak power shaving, where we've got a limited inverter, a limited generator, I should say, power. Um, but the other one is where we use the timers with a much larger generator. So you've got the choice. And the, this particular application generator is plenty big enough, but they want to use the generator for other boats. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe. I always tell people to subscribe. And I'm not going to tell you where I'm going to be next, but uh, somewhere interesting. Thanks. Choose smart energy. No.